The face off many voters have been waiting for in this midterm election season. The candidates for governor going head to head and what will likely be the only New York gubernatorial debate. So who was invited to this week's debate in Buffalo? Republican Rob Astorino, Democratic incumbent Governor Andrew Cuomo, Green Party candidate Howie Hawkins and Libertarian Michael McDermott. What were the key takeaway moments from the debate and how did the candidates handle the issues of the moment? Join me, joining me to help answer those questions is Sarah Burns, Assistant Professor of Political Science at RIT. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. So Sarah, just to begin, do you feel like voters were able to get this real authentic sense of the candidates and their stance on the issues during the debate? I'm talking about the issues like Common Core, hydrofracking, uh, the uh, gun control, economic development, or do you think it was more of what some people would call politics as usual? Um, thanks, Ellen. I think it was a little bit of both. You have a good sense of what it is that Andrew Cuomo wanted to say, and you have him and Astorino really defining their policies, but you also have both of them very, very clearly trying to attack the other and very much trying to make sure that everyone knows the problems with the other candidate. Now, while the Democrat and Republican candidates were doing that, the other two, Repo the other two candidates were trying to a certain extent to very clearly define their, their positions. And so it's interesting if, if you look at it from a different perspective is that the Democrats and Republicans feel as if they're the ones who really have to fight it out, whereas the other uh, candidates felt free to really spend some time defining very clearly their, their positions and didn't spend any time attacking the other candidates. So it's an interesting difference between the two sort of front-runner candidates and the two minority party candidates, or you could sort of oddly call them third-party candidates right, in this right. situation. And that's an interesting perspective, and, and I want to know, Obviously, and you mentioned this, there was, there was this finger pointing, and, and this, the, we heard about corruption and these facts mm -hmm. that were being used to smear other candidates, and then we were hearing that these facts weren't actually factual, and in particular, just like you said, between Cuomo and Astorino. When that happens, how does that, and does that rather, impact voters and their decision when they go to the polls? Well, a lot of studies have shown, actually, that going negative actually allows voters to retain the information, oddly, m more clearly than a positive representation of one's, one's position, which is part of why it is that politicians tend to go negative so, so frequently, besides the fact that smearing one's other, the other candidate is a good way to make yourself look you know, more attractive as a candidate. Um, so I would say that it seems as if... Um, voters would probably have a decent amount of information. At the same time, because they were both throwing so many numbers out and trying so hard to make the other person look bad and misrepresenting facts to a certain extent, then you know it almost seemed as if both Cuomo and Astorino raised and lowered taxes. Mm -hmm. And so the particulars <laughs> of trying to wade through, you know, what a tax raise would look like or what a ta lowering taxes would look like, that I think that voters didn't really get from this debate. Talk to me about the issues you believe were well represented in the debate. Uh, I think they did a very good job of talking about fracking and the differences amongst the candidates on the question of fracking. I think they also did a good job of talking about Common Core, even though there was obviously some mudslinging on that question because of Cuomo trying to support it or trying to, think, trying to demonstrate its merits mm -hmm. and at the same time demonstrating that he didn't have too much control over it. Um, let's see what else. I'm trying to think of other issues that were really good. Um, I think we Cuomo did a very good job of demonstrating what benefits he's, pre uh, what he's done for the economy, right. um, how the economy in New York has improved. And yeah, I, I feel like those issues were really, really the best, um, best for, for uh, the voters. Well, I know that you, you are currently teaching a class about elections mm -hmm. at RIT. So I'm curious to know, what were some of the key issues you discussed with your students that you believe were missing from Wednesday's debate? I had Timothy Nealon from Nazareth College mm -hmm. on set last week, and he said, you know, when it comes to debates like this, this is an opportunity for the candidates to really frame the issue so that undecided voters in particular, when they go to the polls, they have a clear understanding of where certain people stand, and they can say, yes, I, I, I would back this person. I know what they represent. That that being said, what, if anything, did, did the candidates neglect to add that could have been helpful to, to voters, in particular undecided voters? I think they actually could have focused much more on the economy because of the fact that we've now moved through um, a you know, tough recession that you know, it seems as if we're recovering and you know, the economy is doing much better, especially in New York. Um, 
I know that uh, the unemployment rate went from 8.8 went from .8 at the highest to 6.7, or I think it's 6.6 .6 now. So that's a benefit, and so it would be would have been nice to know what jobs or what industries we're we're looking at new jobs in, and you know what both Cuomo and Astorino want to do in order to increase jobs. I think that's really still on the minds of especially people in Rochester because of the fact that there's a sort of changing economy in this area, in especially and more broadly in Western New York. So it would have been nice to have a better sense of that. Yeah. We had uh, a, a viewing here at WXXI on Wednesday, and uh, some reporters from Rochester, they were interviewed and asked about, you know, different candidates and, and what they, who they were impressed by. And, and it turns out many of them were impressed by Howie Hawkins, the Green Party mm -hmm. candidate last night. I wanted to get your take on, were, were you surprised by any candidates in particular in terms of what they represented and, and, and where they stood on, on certain issues? Um, I wasn't particularly surprised by any of the candidates. I, I did find it interesting and refreshing to hear uh, the libertarian candidate say, you know, just don't, just vote libertarian right. one time. You know, and I thought, that's an interesting approach. That is a new <laughs> way to try and say, look, you know, you've got, You've got this boat, you've got this precious commodity, right. so you know, use it in this way this one time. You can right. change your mind in the future, but this one time, try this. Uh, so that I found particularly refreshing. Uh, I think also that Hawkins did a really good job of very clearly defining his, his position. As I said, you know, compared to Astorino and, and Cuomo, there was just a really clear sense of what it is that both Hawkins and McDermott stood for, and so it was nice to see that. Uh, and I also thought that uh, Hawkins did a very good job of saying, Saying, here is how all of these things fit together mm -hmm. and presenting a whole picture wow. right you don't really get that from Astorino and Cuomo because as I said they were so often trying to um, uh, make it so that they could turn a question around and then attack the, the other their opponent wow. so well, it's great to have your perspective. I definitely appreciate it. Sarah Burns, Assistant Professor of Political Science at RIT, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for, for all of your midterm election coverage. Stay tuned to our website, WXXINews.org, and you can listen for the latest during Morning Edition and All Things Considered on WXXI AM 1370 and WRUR FM 88.5.